not ready. Hi everybody. Many times in this channel I've proved that metagame is not the only viable option in MVM. But this time let's be honest and give Chaser its due. Sound off if you're ready. A cookie cutter team is often the most efficient way to go through a mission. That's valid for team of uh, random strangers and team of veterans like this one equally. I'm ready. Thus, this time I'll try to show you the best option if you are playing with veterans friends for every class that compose a cookie cutter MVM team. That's for two CDs may be considered uh, heavy an engineer, a medic, a scout, a demo man and a soldier. So let's begin with the heavy. Perfectly comparable to stock TF2, you should already know that firing from distance with um, the minigun doesn't do any real damage. That's the reason why a veteran engine shall plant the dispenser the most forward he can reliably can, so you can use it in the face of the robots. See, because of this excellent dispenser placement and his maximized range, I want to upgrade ammo capacity until the very last wave. My money can go elsewhere. Your most useful upgrade is the minigun firing speed. Despite it seems a very bit lower than expected with just 10% per point. But more firing speed equals to more faster kills and more faster kills equals to more HP back if you select the HP on kill and then more damage means more rage charge and more projectile reflected. So the firing speed basically upgrades proportionally any other upgrades that you may have or will buy. Now let's talk about the engineer. Don't think that the most useful gear of the NG is the sentry gun, because instead it's the dispenser, because the whole team, and mostly the heavy, will benefit it the most. Like already said, your dispenser can stay in the battlefield without much cover. Robots don't attack in animated things. Just be careful for giants or sentry busters stomping it while running. This suggestion comes with the use of the rescue ranger, so you can babysitting your sentry gun and heal the dispenser for the unavoidable rubber spam. Remember that you can replant your sentry without no delay, even if it's been wrangled. It's a very helpful thing that uh, you must be aware as a difference versus stock TF2. And last but not least, take care of the sentry buster. Run toward him and as soon as he connects you, you must run because he'll start detonating. This with the sentry gun in your hands of course, or use the rescue ranger to survive your sentry gun in the very last seconds. Bonus points if you can stall the sentry buster a bit for medics you so benefit. So, while we are speaking about the medic, let's speak of him directly. We are speaking of metagame matches, so it requires Krieg's Krieg, nothing different allowed, and your most candidate's patience will be in this order, the demo man for sticky traps, the heavy for harvesting masses of robots, and the soldier for crit spamming. Once you have enough resistances and a bit of speed, I'd suggest you to use your uber so on easy targets, busters, small robots, to charge to full faster. And I won't stop saying that your primary upgrades as a medic will go toward the shield and healing mastery, because it's like the firing speed for the heavy we discussed before. Faster healing means fast shield charge and means fast reviving of dead teammates and fast top over healing everybody and so on. One upgrade benefits for more. Fourth classes for the cookie cutter team is the scout. 
Maybe you have already seen my tutorial about the scout, but let's be fast here on this subject. Your primary reason for being there as a scout is money, collecting money, getting A+, and all team being happy. But your milk is also important for the HP to hold your teams attacking the robots, but also for his slowing upgrade. That works very well not only for super scouts, but also to slow sentry busters, if you have a medic that can take advantage with his Uber so of recharging 100% his Uber. Pro tip for the heavy and the rest of the team, of course, don't shoot giants until medics are dropped by the sticky traps or explosive headshots, otherwise you will be vote kicked even in lower and easier difficulties. Another very important thing is keeping the fan of war that can mimicry your most troublesome giants to rip in pieces in seconds by your team. Let's speak about the demo man. A crucial role in the meta game because is to keep the area free of Uber medics. You will see this veteran demo man can rank up astonishingly numbers on his kill streak, Scottish resistance. A parenthesis for the medic: leave canteen sharing at the very end of a match, not buy it at the beginning. The canteens can be a waste of money too early. You should put money in durable upgrades that last till the end and not canteens that last five seconds. Another parenthesis for all. Don't forget crit resistance. If the wave has some 100% critical bots, you'll save your soul maximizing it. Okay, speaking back about the demo man, you'll soon discover that the Scottish resistance is unbeatable in MVM. The paths of the robots are quite constant and well known in a wave, so you can definitely plan earlier every sticky traps you may need and seeing a giant plus giant medic combo arriving you should plant 14 stickies all in one place and laugh after the detonation you'll see something like that very soon in this video one click and the combo disappears and last but not least let's speak about the soldier it's very useful to take care of ng bots when they spawn and spamming rockets everywhere by buying early rocket specialists you can stun robots and it's very useful much more than air blasting pyros for super scouts for example and the neglected damage fall off of the rocket specialist really is astonishingly useful to buy but just buy one because the more rocket specialists you buy and your only additional stats are the quite useless projectile speed and blast radius nothing to call home about I would say that the soldier in the cookie cutter team is the less crucial class of all. It's a jack of all trades, but that's all, you can survive without him. And that's about two CTS tools I'm speaking, because for example in some expert games he can even suffer the team, because the pyro boats artificial intelligence can reflect the hell out of your rockets toward your team. On the other end, in other missions like Mecha Engine, his buff banner can be very useful to help destroying the tank. You may have seen my purple glowing cache plugin in place here. Check the link in the description for this and also for the HP of the giants added to the HUD. That's another script available in every description of my videos about MVM. Speaking a bit again about the heavy and his weapons, I stopped using the brass beast lately because yes, it's a bit more damaging, but you can really freely move and face yourself and block and avoid spam. Maybe it could be a different thing in expert mission like Gear Grinder, where every money counts because of the scarcity, so every small damage upgrade as default can be useful because you won't have to pay for it and can survive the lesser maneuverability. Here you see that HP on kill really helps a lot. I've just bought one because we have a medic, otherwise I've already raised it a lot, a lot more. Buster has 
can just carry on. A pro tip for the medic, when the field is empty of robots and you are already unleashing your Skrixkrieg, use it on the demo, because he can put a trap that can stay for later usage. See how useful can be a milk sentry buster for the medics? With this method our medic can immediate crit trap again and again. That's the strategy. And if used in conjunction with maximized damage and critical scouting resistance, nothing remains. I feel a bit evil with this medic, because not leaving a single victim for his huberso, and that will become worse and worse. At some point, some penetration upgrade does not hurt. It's like two birds with one bullet if you line up your victims. A goodly timed shield, some resistance, and you are good to go even with all these spam. As you may see, the Medic First Choice passion is always the demo in the metagame, and if the demo man is a good demo man, it's a very good reason to do so. The demo man is quite an exception for the crit canteen's usage because he knows when he shall need a critical sticky trap and if the medic is not ready, he can do by himself.
Do demo, man. Don't leave anything for the team, damn it. And now our Medigas boat can team sharing to help plant creep traps. Like I said before, an engine can have some places where staying in a position can get the sentry busters circling below erratically, for example above the camper in Manhattan, hence it can help the medic with his huber soul. Max HP on kill, max resistance to block every horde. A bit of rage for utility. Go! I love this doctor. Go, go, go! Here they come. Five, four. Three, two, one. With Scottish resistance, you can plant a sticky carpet, so you can detonate it only partially by aiming just a part of the carpet and then another and another one. As I said, I am a bit too evil with this poor medic. Okay, just now lending him some. About the minigun rage, I recommend to use it very sparingly. It lowers your damage output of a good 25% while in action. So you push back your enemies but damage them less in the meantime. If you use it to line up your enemies, it can be useful together with penetration though.
Remember the fact that you must buy maximized critical resistance? That's a moment that show you how important it can be. Even with maximized critical resistance you can survive this horde of miniguns, so you better take cover anyway. Your demo man will do the rest. Practically, Demo Man can go along, while the rest is taunting at this time. Oh, my ears! Oh! And 40 seconds later, still horns singing. After 9 years of development, yeah, tax valve. See that damn bomb stick it into the space tank at spawn? That's causing the, the endless alert. Public service announcement, our soldier has switched to a sniper. The more giant heads around, the better for landing his explosive ash. In this case, you can use Rage to reset the giant back at his pole, but only if you see that he is going a bit too far than expected, because remember, Rage reduces your damage. In this part where there are scattered Uber medics, some sticky traps will be very beneficial. Our scout will take care of the lonely soldier at capture point A.
I'm trying to inspect the scout to show you his upgrades, failing miserably. Now, it's quite apparent that playing metagame matches with people with some tools under their belts is... easy? So after match hand, let's recap. Playing alone with strangers, playing with non tens of tools in Manab yet, maybe you should consider going playing one of the Cookie Cutter MVM team. And remember that the metagame can change depending on the tour. For example, Mecha Engine requires a pyro for the increased number of tanks. Gear Grinder does not see very well soldiers, a second heavy may be appropriate in this case or a pyro for tanks as well is preferred to a low damaging class like the medic. Remember that every class can buy their HP on kills and survive without a medic, like we did years ago before Valve buffed the medic with the shield and reviving fissures. But this is two cities, and here the cookie cutter team we've seen is the engineer, the demo man, the heavy, the scout, a crit medic and the soldier. It's a classic that never ends. So far, I hope you really enjoy this multi-class small tutorial explained with a cookie cutter theme match. And thanks for watching.